Hello, my name is Ed. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I will explain what I did wrong when converting my old bike to an e-bike. So hopefully you don't make the same mistake. I didn't know anything about e-bikes when I first started a few years ago. I bought a used front wheel with a 36 volt, 250 watt motor for around $50 or so. The motor size I know is pitiful, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money on my first experiment and I was up for the challenge. I bought a used 36 volt, eight amp hour scooter battery for $45 to go with it. That was another mistake. I know, knowing what I know now, but mm, it's one of those things you learn as you go along. The controller is a 36 volt, 13 amp uh, package unit I bought on Amazon. Now I needed something to put it on and bought a cheap dinosaur of a bike, an old Diamondback cruiser that somebody had laying in their backyard. I weighed a ton and the little hub motor had trouble getting it going and I couldn't go very far either. My brother gave me his old 1996 Trek that was 20 pounds lighter, so I thought, why not put the hub motor on the Trek? I did, but I wasn't satisfied with the performance. So I got a more powerful controller, a 36 volt, 17 amp one, which provided more torque. By this time, I'd read and watched enough videos to know that the hub motors need torque arms to take the stress from the wheels slots to the arms. But everything I read said that with this small motor, I shouldn't have any problems. Riding around with both the old Diamondback and the Trek seemed to confirm this. Also, I found out my Trek didn't have the clearance to put the required brackets on, so I couldn't have put any uh, torque arms on it anyway. But I wasn't worried, but I should have been. I didn't hurt myself, but I could have. You know what they say about luck? It's better to be lucky than smart, or is that good? Well, I was darn lucky. I came back from a ride on my Trek with the new, upsized, more powerful controller. I stopped in front of my driveway to say hello to a neighbor. I got a slight grade going up to the garage door and thought, why not hit the throttle the last few feet? That's when I heard a strange noise and looked down and saw the wheel turning, but it wasn't attached to the fork anymore because it had snapped. The motor cable had pulled out of the socket and the motor stopped. Looking back on this, I thought I should tell people about my experience and what I had learned. So if you're going to buy a hub motor to attach to a fork, make sure you install torque arms. Amazon has all kinds for sale. Grim Technology sells great ones. These take the load from the wheel, mounting slots to the fork arm. Or if you're set on buying something with a hub motor, you can always buy an e-bike from a company that designs their bikes to accommodate the hub motor. Because the old bikes, they weren't designed to take hub motors. Since my near disaster, I've converted a few bikes now, and I only use mid-drive motors. Worst you can do for these is snap a chain, but with the shifter cutout switch installed, this is pretty well eliminated. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Please leave a comment if you have suggestions to help others or if you have had similar problems like mine. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.